Hello, and welcome to your favorite queer cast Starfinder podcast. This week, we're finishing up our guest appearance with Bitch Team Alpha's at writer Jess, Jessica, or Sitsa to us. Jess's character Sitsa is another Solarian, and you get to see her and Angus interact, which I think is really pretty cool. I'd also like to give a shout out to our listener who uses the handle Wookie Gunner, who gave me the best description for what Angus's supernova looks like. So listen for that later in the episode. At Punder Drone and I, at Cormelon, are also going to be guests on the podcast that Jess DMs called Bitches and Liches this week. So check out that show and let us know what you think. As always, we hope that you will take some time and give us a five-star rating on iTunes. And if you have friends who like queer representation in arts and gaming, please let them know about us. We can be reached on Twitter at DQ Points. For email, you can reach us at experiencepoints at gmail.com or on Facebook. And with that... I'll let you get to the episode. Cheers. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Experience Points, your favorite podcast where a bunch of queer people jump around the universe pulling all kinds of shenanigans. I'm your friendly neighborhood GM, Miyu. I'm Kelric. I play Angus, the gay noir. <laughs> I'm Taylor. I play Dr. Phaedra Lasenva, the ship's engineer. I'm Megan, and I play Captain Kira. I'm Absco, or <laughs> I'm Hunter. I play <laughs> Absco Cash, the pilot. And mm. for our second episode in a row, we have a very special guest with us, Jess, Woo-hoo. GM of Bitches and Liches. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jessica. I'm the lead editor for the podcast network, Bitch Team Alpha, and we have a bunch of fun stuff hosted by a bunch of bitches. You can find me everywhere at Right Jessar or at BTA Podcast, and I'm playing a uh, Kasatha named Sitsa. Welcome. Excellent. So, Sitsa, would you like to give us a report on what has happened so far? <sighs> Sitsa's a personal log. <laughs> <laughs> I trust Solomon's judgment for the most part, but she sent me to join a somewhat unusual crew after they asked for help. We fought off a couple of ships who were looking for an easy fight, which they did not find with the Zephyr. They fled with the promise this wasn't over, and we continued our journey to Eoc. Excellent. So, yes, you have fought off the pirates who thought you were easy pickings and discovered not so much. And then you jumped into the drift, finally. Uh, according to your calculations, it should take you about four standard days to get to Eox. So, what do you guys do for the first couple of days? Um, I feel like Absco would try to get to know Sitsa a bit, but also try to probe for information about Solomon. What does that look like? Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, go for it. You have the Uh, GM's permission to proceed. (laughs) Uh, So after our our battle and everything, and, you know, we we get thoroughly rested and everything, um, I I imagine that, you know, Sitsa, would you be, like, up in the the bridge? Or, like, where would Sitsa hang out for a long time of travel? Um, She'd probably look for some place to mostly be alone, to, like, be away from these strange people she doesn't know very well. But realizing she's going to be spending some time here, she'll start, uh, she'll she'd probably hang out on the bridge, yeah, and just try to, like, get a feel for what's going on. Okay, so yeah, Absco um, kind of comes uh, comes onto the bridge, and um, they they sit next to you, and they're like, "So, uh, are you liking it so far on the Zephyr?" It's a very interesting experience here. Uh, interesting is a great way of describing it. That's how I found it. Um, so you are a bodyguard for Solomon. You've worked with Solomon. I've worked with Solomon for many years. Yes. Is that where you've learned your, you know, magnificent gunnery skills? Laying on the flattery, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Can you roll for buttering up? <laughs> <laughs> if you can, then I'd like to roll for unimpressed. <laughs> Ow. Aww. <laughs> she, she sort of like shrugs, and when she does, she like lifts all four of her arms and like a super exaggerated shrug motion. She's like, I learned it, you know, on in my travels. Oh, so like to where? From where? <laughs> 
she she sort of like sat, she was kind of like looking out at all the stuff that's going on in front of her. And when you keep asking her questions, she looks at you and just says, "What what do you need from me?" Um, oh, nothing. You know, these uh, long days of travel just you know tend to go by, and sometimes we just need a friend. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Bugging on the heartstrings. <laughs> uh, she says, well, if if you are looking for someone to talk to, if you have troubles, I, I, I don't know if I can help, but I, I'm willing to try. <laughs> oh, no, th this is more a, a reciprocal conversation, I feel. I can give a little, you can give a little, we'll both win. Well, what is it that you're hoping I'll give to you? Just a better understanding of yourself, maybe a little bit about Solomon, who knows? We can play it by ear. <laughs> <laughs> when you, as soon as you say that, a better understanding of like Sipsa and Solomon, she sort of like draws back a little bit and crosses her arms and is like, I, I don't know that I feel comfortable giving you information that Solomon didn't see fit to give you. Oh, they're aware that I'm trying this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun. I'm going to go eat. <laughs> I actually All have right. like the, the, the spindle that uh, is kind of circling in my head that indicates that I don't need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> she just watches you all the way and she looks very confused. <laughs> all right. What about uh, Captain Kira? <clears throat> Kira is, you know, she is sitting in her captain's chair for most of the time um and then she'll probably check up on george <laughs> who has see. a very long pink glittery sequined cape for you is it done oh yeah here try this on <laughs> <laughs> um, okay i put it on and how does it look <laughs> right? I, I feel like it looks good, okay? And so I'm going to wear it. Um, yeah, I wear it for the rest of the, the time. And so then I'm going to be like, George, would you mind? Uh, I need something else. Uh, yeah, what, what can I make you? Do you have any more of that pink fabric? Uh, yeah, I bought a whole bolt of it. Oh, good. I'm going to need a seat cover. Oh my God. <laughs> Same style. Same style. All right, I can do that. All right. And so then I go back to my captain's chair for the rest of the time. She's probably meditating and um, praying. All right. Kira, <laughs> while you are wearing this cape, I will give you a plus two dipl to diplomacy and a minus two to intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> It is not easy to intimidate someone wearing a bright pink, glittery sequined cape. Challenge accepted. Can that, can that be vice versa in very uh, specific circumstances? Yeah. In very specific circumstances, yes. I.e., if Kira is hitting on somebody. Uh, what is what is Dr. Phaedra doing for the, for the first couple days? Um, first thing that Phaedra wants to do is check up on the shields, make sure that, like, they're coming back nicely. Yes. Uh, it, it's uh, not hard work to bring them back at this point. You have plenty okay. of power left. Uh, the shields didn't take any, the, the actual system didn't take any damage. Uh, the shields, are, you know, they'll replenish themselves just fine. Okay, cool. And then, like, just running, like, generic, like, systems checks to make sure that everything on the ship is running fine especially the drift engine considering we're in the middle of the drift yeah and then yeah, the, after... the drift engine seems to be functioning as appropriate okay and then after that um she's gonna go hit up sitsa for some relationship tips with solomon <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> bring her your um uh, uh, really bad solomon based poetry <laughs> <laughs> So she's like, she's like kind of standing just like a little far away from Sitsa, just like trying not to be like interrupting her in case she's like in the middle of something, but just noticeably just like standing there, like obviously waiting. <laughs> Sitsa will turn and see that you're just like clearly staring at her like you need something to say. 
yes, what, how can I help you? And she, she sounds so exasperated. Like she already <laughs> knows this is going to be exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just gonna get right down to it, and I'm not gonna try and cut any corners here. But um, I was wondering what you could tell me about Solomon on more of a personal basis. Um, Solomon and I have been spending some time together, and I just I mean I don't I don't really know what her favorite food is or like what her favorite color is uh i I feel the need to point out (laughs) that by spending time she means they went on one date (laughs) there was lots of shrimp and kitty text it it. (laughs) and it's kind of a date with quotation marks (laughs) (laughs) really like phaedra's definitely definitely considered it a date but solomon's like yeah, we can hang out. <laughs> <laughs> what what did you do on this date of yours? Um, you know, we we sat and and ate at the mess hall, and we just we were t- we talked about a little bit about her previous adventuring days, and I don't know, she didn't really go into detail about anything. And I I think if you want to get to know better, you should try to convince her to make something for you. Solomon doesn't tell a lot of people this, but she's a phenomenal cook. And if you can get her cooking, I think you'll have a you'll have a great time together. Okay, can I tell him this bitch is lying to me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to use that photo or not? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, can, you can use psychology. <laughs> oh, it's a natural one. It's so, a natural one for a nine. Uh, you suddenly realize that you are way out of practice in reading Kasatha uh, sci- uh, physiological cues. So you're pretty sure she's having I you on. You're pretty sure believe. that she's like poking fun at you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I see that you're busy, and I just fucking walk away. <laughs> is gonna watch you walk away and raise all four of her arms, and it's like, what's happening, motion? Like, what? <laughs> We're like the ghost of I'm Christmas, and <laughs> the worst possible way. <laughs> um, what is your life, Sitza? What is your life? <laughs> We lost Miu again. Oh, no. But what a great time. I mean, that smile is wonderful. It (laughs) is. It's a treasure. (laughs) Don't be a dick. What? It is. I just want Solomon to love me back. (laughs) Okay, am I back? Yes, you are. Yes. But just a quick question. And just so y'all know, I can totally hear y'all when I drop. (laughs) And and see y'all moving. So yes, that's I I know that smile had to be nice and fun. To it was sit right it was there. lovely. Yes, it was. And uh, yes, actually, believe it or not, as it turns out, Solomon really is an amazing cook. Cool. But uh, Phaedra does not believe this. Believe this. <laughs> Phaedra thinks she was being had uh, led on. So Angus, what do you do for a couple days? So there are three things I would like to do. One okay. is I'd like to meet up with Phaedra and. I would like to, so, Phaedra, uh, Phaedra, I'd like to see if maybe you and I could sit down and start working on maybe a, a maze core together and see if we could cut down the time on, on building one so that we can start incorporating those into some of our gear. I mean, it is something that we're good at, and it'd be a way for us to get to know each other a little better. That sounds fantastic. I've been interested in using a maze core for quite some time. Let's, let's get to it. Awesome. And so I'd like for us to do that for, you know, part of each day, just spend a couple hours working on a maze Okay. Board. And I don't know how long it takes to do that. I know the, the crafting time is figured out somehow. But usually, an eight, usually an eight-hour day is considered a full day work on mm-hmm. it. So if you're spending a couple hours a day, so you spend four hours a day for two days, that's a full day's work on it. Cool. So we'll do that until, you know... You tell us mm-hmm. we have one built, and then the first one, I figure, we'll go to Phaedra, but we'll just keep doing that as we're traveling. Okay. The second thing is I'd like to meet up with George and, you know, have a 
a little conversation about his his skill set. So I, I'd find him wherever he's at and just be like. He is currently fitting the captain's seat with <laughs> bright pink cloth. Okay. So I would just, uh, obviously the captain's not there if it's being si- si- fitted, so. Um, obviously. George, have, have you got a minute? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I'd like to talk to you about maybe, you know, helping me out with me armor. I mean, it's, me armor's good working, but I'd really like it to be a little more fashionable so that, you know, when I'm fighting, I look good. <laughs> and so, oh, well, uh, what, what are you thinking of? He looks really excited. Yeah, so I know he's got excess pink fabric and my moat makes a pink axe and, you know, all kinds of cool stuff there. So I'm like, let's use some of oh, that. Oh, I, I can make you a cape like the captain. No capes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no capes. No, 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 a cape. I don't um, know what I was thinking, cape. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking something a little more fitted and, you know, just kind of flattering on the body and, you know, a little eye catching, just a little bit of sparkle where it's needed. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got this. And he pulls out his tape measure and you can tell he's very eager to please you. Probably because you were the most vocal about not bringing him along. <laughs> Good. Um, so, yes, he, he takes all your measurements and uh, seems to be working on an idea for some extra little bits and pieces for your armor. Super cool. To make you cool. look just that much more fabulous. Excellent. And then the third thing I'd like to do is um, go, out, go ahead out there and find Sitsa and have a little conversation there. <laughs> I feel so bad for Sitsa because just we're all just one at a time. <laughs> hey. <laughs> just trickling in, like, what what are you doing here? Yeah. Call him, call him in. <laughs> well, and like my request here is, you know, I I've since I've leveled to three, I'm spending a little bit more time meditating and a little bit more time, mm-hmm. you know, really focusing on my powers. And Spend. we have a empty cargo bag. Right, and that's yes, you do. reasonably large, I would assume. And so, reasonably so, I would go to Sitsa and I would say, "So, I was really impressed with your uh, uh, fighting abilities while we were in that combat there, and I, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to spar a little, get a little fighting practice in together." Uh, Sitsa, when you say this. First, she looks a little bit concerned just because she's had very strange interactions with everyone on this ship so far. Mm-hmm. But she kind of really, like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I would, I think that I'd really enjoy that. Thank you. Please lead the way. Absolutely. And as we're walking, I, I fill her in about growing up in um, on Absalom Station at uh, Kasatha Enclave, and so I'm not unfamiliar with Kasatha and particularly, you know, that's where I learned my Solarian abilities. And I can see the moat uh, on mm-hmm. her shoulder, so I know that, you know, we're both Solarian. By the way, what color is your moat, Jess? Yes. Oh, mine is uh, like a deep purple. Very nice. All right. Like ha- almost almost red. It's so like dark purple, like burgundy, I guess. Cool. Nice. So I would like you know, basically us to go in there and then just have a little bit of a combat between the two of us where, you know, when it's done, we're, we're, we've used a few of our powers, we've tested each other a little bit, mm-hmm. and you know, just sort of see how it goes. So just do a couple of rolls, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, you see Stranger when... Wants uh, to watch. <laughs> you see when you uh, Angus along. reaches up and, and grabs his moat, it becomes a giant axe. It's what does pink. he see when you reach up and grab your moat? <laughs> oh, when I reach up and grab mine, it becomes a, uh, oh, I forgot the word for it. It's not a scimitar. Uh, the sickle? other word. Scythe? Thank you. A sickle. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh, so it's a, a large sickle. curved blade where like if she hits it, if she hits the outside of it, it can like slosh them up pretty good, but she can also just like reach it around some head and decapitate them. It's perfect Ooh. machine for decapitation. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Yeah. So we can we can run this real quick without having to run a full PvP combat. Cool. Uh, what color is it? Is have... it also purple? Yeah, it's also purple. Awesome. Let's have y'all. Uh, let's have just have each of you roll an attack roll real quick. So I, depending on how far apart we start, I do want to start with a stellar rush. Okay. Like, oh, all right. I'm like, 
Let's get so, to it. <laughs> so yeah, we're, th this is this is a little more uh, cinematic here. So we're going to have. Uh, go ahead and roll me initiatives real quick. Let's see who gets to act first, so we know. Oh, it'll just definitely that. be. Oh, it's not I. <laughs> <laughs> My first one of the day. Excellent. Okay, so Sitsa, you get the first move as you each have given your uh, salutes, and you see Angus like set his feet, like he's ready to run at you. Okay. So are we are we going like all out with this yes. sparring session? Okay. Let's do it. So then she's going to Sissa will attune herself to uh, <laughs> graviton mode. Oh, nice! And then mm -hmm. graviton versus photon here. Hell yeah! Um, and then just roll attack. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh! <laughs> A nat twenty. <laughs> Sitsa <laughs> launches forward like Angus. You're you're ready. You're you're psyching yourself up. You're ready for this rush, right? No. But before you can even move, Sitsa leaps forward and just begins hammering you with a combination Whew. that uh, a couple of times she gets through your guard. Damn right she does. So let's have you go, go ahead and go ahead and roll your attack. There, okay. Angus. Let's see what your counterattack looks like. All right, so I'm doing uh, photon attunement, and... So you find her, her deep burgundy getting deeper. And I crit. Hello. <gasps> and Nat 20s. in return, in return, <laughs> uh, Angus finds nice. his feet and begins hammering back with that axe, and Sitsa, you're actually having to, like, defend yourself as this axe is hammering home, and he gets a couple blows through your guard as well. Uh, this seems to be a pretty even fight at this point. Respect. <laughs> yep, so that, that goes down like that for a few rounds. Uh, let's say you're all fully attuned at this point. You've, you've gotten in your groove. We have Photon and Graviton just going nuts. I mean, definitely this sound, mm -hmm. Phaedra, and anybody can hear the sounds of, of combat oh, yeah. going on. And it sounds intense. <laughs> I mean, the, the the very fundamental forces of the universe are fighting each other right now. <laughs> peek inside, peek inside this cargo hold. Dangerous. And then see, what, <laughs> like, look at what they're doing. And I'm just like, oh, shit. And then on the outside of the door, I'm going to write, danger, hold <laughs> pen. <laughs> step inside the door. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All, All right. right, so you get to fully attuned. What uh, you uh, what are you going to do with your attunements here? Sitsa goes first. So Sitsa is going to um, use a black hole ability to pull Angus closer to her. Mm -hmm. um, and what she's going to mm -hmm. do is as he's being pulled closer, she's going to pull up her sickle and position it so that like when he gets close to her, basically his head is like in that part that she can use to decapitate if she twists it just a little Woo! bit. And like nice. pulls back, obviously, but be, be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> okay. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, you get a fort save there, Angus. Let's see that mm -hmm. fort save. See if you can avoid being pulled forward. Ugh. Oh, I do. Oh, yes, <laughs> you, you blast out your gravitational force, and it pulls, and you see him just plant his feet and withstand your pull. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is very impressive. So, <laughs> and so then Angus... Kind of like, damn, all right. So since that's the case, I am going to use Stellar Rush because if it was going to pull me 10 feet closer to you, I am in I'm in the place, a position where I can charge you. So all right. I am going to Stellar Rush up to you and... Okay. Uh, so you're going to roll a, uh, a combat maneuver check. Where on this is ever that? find where that was in there? I think it was just, oh, it's just it's, the uh, the melee. Okay. So, so you see on, on the oh, I do see it. Got front it. page, where, yep, melee, there you go. 20. 20, okay, you're not going to beat the CM. Okay. So you smash into this Kasatha, mm -hmm. and she doesn't move. But she still takes fire damage. <laughs> now, roll your uh, reflex save there. Roll, roll your reflex save there, Sitsa. Ooh, that's yeah. not going to do it. Nope. So you go to pull him towards you, right? And he just stands his ground. And then all of a sudden, he's moving towards you. You have just enough time to brace as he explodes into pink stellar flames, like just pink stellar fire smashing into you. You don't get pushed back, but it burns. And Makes sense. So I do that, and I'm just curious. 
so Stellar Rush is you rush in, and then at the end you get an attack. At the so, end you get a uh, a bull rush instead of an attack. Okay. Okay. Which cool. is what your your melee against her CM was. Okay. Against so, her AC versus CM. So that was to see if you could push her back. You didn't push her back. Mm -hmm. But you managed to hit her with the full force of your stellar fire. Okay. And uh, just to wrap this up, I just want to do one yep. more thing. Okay. Since, that, since Stellar Rush doesn't uh, end my attunement, but the Black Hole does end um, Sitsa's attunement, mm -hmm. I then want mm -hmm. to blow my supernova right in her face. Okay. That makes <laughs> another reflex save. <gasps> Oof. Nope. He smashes into you. You get hit with this stellar fire, and then he just explodes in stellar fire now, all over. Um, uh, one of our listeners gave me the perfect uh, sort of cinematic for what it looks like when Angus's uh, stellar uh, supernova goes off which is, mm -hmm. it looks like a giant pink glitter bomb of hot pink embers that just yes. fling out from his body. Oh, I love that. Nice. So, <laughs> yes, I it's a, yeah, Ang Angus can fight. Yeah. Angus can fight, and Angus sits it can fight too. You, <laughs> yeah. you bested her this time, but you know it could have gone either way. And so, with it being over, I... Um, I, I extend my hand to you, and I just say, "Thank you. This this was, oh, this was something I really needed, and it, it's just nice to have somebody else who, who can really, you know, throw down like this. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you." Yeah, Sitsa will shake your hand, uh, the same awkward like double handshake thing, and she like slightly bows her head in acknowledgement, and then says. I really appreciate, I really appreciate, sorry, every time you talk, I start to pick up your Scottish a little bit. I'm trying really hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity to spar with you. This was very informative. Would you like to, I feel like we could, we, we have a lot to talk about. Do you want to like grab a coffee or something or whatever? Right. That Starfinder is when you hear the alarm, the alarm bells going off. Aye, that sounds lovely, but I think we need to get back to positions here. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and off, just start running for the bridge. Yeah. So this is just going to go straight for the gunner seat and All right. assume that they'll let her know what's going on. Everyone runs to stations. George begins stitching furiously. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so when you get to your station there, Angus, uh, you realize it is a collision proximity alert. Oh, shit. Pulling up your sensors, <laughs> you realize that... A chunk of the hell plane is directly in your path. In fact, a big sort of gothic cathedral is in your way with bunch of with a bunch of devils flying around. You are on a direct collision course. Absco, look at the monitor. And I throw it up for mm -hmm. everyone to see. I'm like, get us the hell out of here. No uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do uh, a piloting check to see if I can evade or like maneuver okay. so that we don't crash. Use the plus two right. from the ship. That's a 14 with the plus two from the ship. <laughs> 14. With a 14. <laughs> you manage to avoid the majority of it. Mm. Uh, you clip it on your way through. A couple of devils seem to cling to the ship as you are cleared. But then a warning comes up. You have altered your course in the drift. Uh -oh. It is now unknown where you're going to pop out. Oh. <laughs> it's all because of a damn adventure hook. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Must tell us be. this? Because I don't think the rest of us would know. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Absco, you now realize, as as the warning pops up, that you have altered course in the drift. Um, I, uh, I destination do. Un uncertain. Yeah, I, I turn around in my chair, like slow dramatic swivel, and I say, I don't know where we're going. But you know where we've been? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, 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 I would jump on the comms to right. uh, Phaedra. Can you check the engines to make sure we're OK? And uh, then I would get on the computer and start seeing if there's a way for the computer to uh, change our navigation to get us back on track. Give me your knowledge engineering. Who was that to? Or your engineering check. Uh, you, Angus. Or uh, physical science or whatever. Oh, that'll work. 22. 
You know that once you have set your course prior to entering the drift, any alteration within the drift throws you wildly off track and means it is entirely unpredictable where you end up. Awesome. And there is no recovery. Oh shit, oh shit. Because oh, shit. the drift is a completely different place. Yeah. I think dropping out sooner rather than later is the wisest course of action here. Uh, do, do we know that we're able to disable the drift engine like that? Yes, you can disable the drift engine at, uh, early and drop out of the drift. The issue, okay. here that, the issue here that we're facing, though, is that if we have devils clinging to our ship, then they might come out with us, and who knows what will happen then. Captain, what do we do? If they come out with us, they come out with us. All right. Um, so, I'm just, so, piloting check? Yeah. Computers? Give me a piloting okay. check. Well, that's a 15. 15. All right. You manage to disengage the drift drive and come out in a, a nice empty region of space, rather near a planetoid body. Uh, the devils that have been clinging to your ship explode in the vacuum of space. Oof. Well, what doesn't go flying off gets burned up on the shields. So I would okay. immediately start uh, using the computer to try and figure out where we are. You know, any okay, give me a computer's system. check. So do you want to try and help with that, um, Absco? Sure. Oh, my dog. That's an 11. So um, that's plus two for you. All right, yep. so 27. Correct. 27, uh, yeah. You can plot your approximate place in the universe, which is nowhere within the PACT system. And in fact, uh, not entirely sure exactly where you are, other than you, I mean, you can, you can point where you are in the known universe, not that that does you any good, because you can't identify anything within light years around. And you can't find any active drift beacons, oh, which no. are necessary for drift navigation. Hmm. Oh, goody. But with that check, you are getting a signal for a drift beacon on that planetoid down below. But it doesn't seem to be in full operation. So I relay all that to everyone on the crew. And uh, Captain, I don't know what else to do but to head towards the beacon because there, there's no way to go back. This is, this is what we have. Yeah, let's okay. put her down. Absco, let me know what you need. Everyone else should probably buckle up. So I would start putting on whatever safety gear we have for, and I would turn to George and I'd be like, George, you might be safer if you're sitting somewhere in Buckled In. Oh, oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea. He, he goes to his bunk <laughs> and uh, throws some webbing over him and clicks it in. So he's laying in his bunk, clipped in by webbing. <laughs> okay, uh, so Absco is gonna roll a piloting check to see if he can land. Oh my gosh, my piloting checks. Ooh, 11. The atmosphere is a lot thicker than you expected. And yep. so it is a bumpy ride. The shields managed to protect you. you. Managed to set it down without any major damage, but it is a lot bumpier of a ride than you expected. Are we anywhere near where the drift beacon was or? Yeah, you're, you're within a couple hours walk easily. Mm. Uh, what do I have to do to check the atmosphere to see if it's breathable for us or? Uh, you can just use your sensors. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, so I would do that. Uh, using your sensors, you realize that the air is a little thicker, but it has a decent oxygen-nitrogen mix, which is what most of you breathe, so you should be okay. Are there any life forms that we can detect? None. Okay. So I let everyone know, and I, I don't know what to expect here, but you know, if there's a drift weekend, there were people, and so... I don't know what to, what else we can do. I mean, is, is there a way to check for, uh, is there a way to check for undead? Give me a computer's check. A 20? You're pretty certain that you have found a way to uh, scan for unique biosignatures of undead. Mm -hmm. You don't find any. Okay. So I just pass all that on to everyone. And I think we just get ready and head out to the drift beacon to see if we can find anything or see if we can fly in closer. It's up to you guys. Um. <laughs> Don't <laughs> the captain's like no. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, we're kind of stranded here, so I feel like we have to land and perhaps try to find our way back at least, or try to, to try to find our way to that drift beacon. I, and I, I'm, I turned to Sitska, and I'm like, as fun as it was sparring with you, I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. 
I'd like, us to, <laughs> I'd like us to find a way back. Agreed. But I think with the, between the two of us, we can keep everyone safe. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. And then get ready and head out. All right. Everyone agree? Mm. Yeah. You head out into what is generally a barren landscape. The atmosphere feels almost like you have a little electrical tingle as you walk through it. Uh, but it does seem like you're able to breathe. The location for the Drift Beacon, you can actually see looming on the horizon up ahead. It seems to be some sort of, uh, coming from the top of some sort of pyramid. Head towards it. Phaedra, why don't you just stay here so that you can watch the ship? I'm not really trusting uh, where we are. I, that sounds reasonable. Can the rest of us just get on our way then? Yeah. And so as you make your way across the barren landscape, uh, you draw up to what seems to be some sort of pyramid with uh, definite steps going up. And at the top, you can definitely see a drift beacon. Now, the interesting thing is drift beacons don't usually appear on terrestrial areas because if they do so, uh, your ship will materialize within, you know, such distance of a beacon, which means it's just as likely to materialize inside the planet oh. as anywhere around it. They're usually in space, but that is definitely a drift beacon. Is, can uh, Sitsa, like, sort of examine the pyramid that it's on, see if she knows anything about why this drift beacon would be here, or anything about the pyramid itself? Engineering, please. Hmm. Can I assist? 17, untrained. Let's uh, see, do you have culture is untrained? But I do get a plus two for culture because uh, Hasatha are historian. Okay. All right. Between Angus's engineering skill with a 19 and Sitsa's general Kasatha interest in history, you're able to piece together that this was likely built by a civilization who received Triune's message which was spread throughout the entire universe at the same time uh, with drift technology as everyone had it in their heads, but a lot of cultures weren't able, didn't know what to do with it. They weren't advanced enough. This appears to have been some sort of holy site as though they had built the drift beacon, which had appeared in their dreams as some sort of holy monument. But whatever culture it was, you see no sign of them now. Um, I want to do a perception check um, just to, I know our, our scanners didn't reveal any life forms or anything like that, but I just kind of want to get a sense of the environment around us. Okay. Uh, 13. A 13. Uh, you haven't seen any life forms since you, on the couple hours walk it took to get here. Uh, generally, you get the impression of some sort of, perhaps a disaster has occurred here or something, but wow. that it's generally pretty barren. But there is just that, that weird electric tingle in the air, uh, which you can't find a reason for. Maybe we need to go up to the beacon. Oh, I thought we were up at the beacon. No, you were at the base of the pyramid looking at it. Yeah. Oh, well then, if we can't find a way into the pyramid, then let's climb up the pyramid if there's a way up. There is indeed a pretty obvious staircase going up, a cool. stairway. Yeah, uh, Absco goes up. Okay, just a moment here, because I got to throw some stuff together. So while you're looking, is there anything for us to see as we're climbing up? Uh, just as you climb, see further and further out these electrical storms on the horizon, bright green flashes of lightning, but nothing in particular hmm. until you get to the top. Okay. And you see the drift beacon sitting there atop this, uh, what is obviously some sort of dais or something. Uh, go ahead and give me perception checks. Everybody. I got a 23. I got a 10. Uh, 23. All right. Well, since, uh, you notice crawling out from behind the drift beacon. Nice. Oh, and Kira got a 25. Yep. Nice. You notice crawling out from behind the drift beacon a creature which seems to be floating along on an electrical cloud that Ooh. then unfurls itself, screeching. Well, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Uh, doesn't it look like the thing that we met up with on the... It looks not entirely unfamiliar, but you can tell that this is a different creature than the electro mm -hmm. Uh Kira I, I... notices coming around 
the backside around the dais here, another creature, which doesn't look too happy to see you. It looks somewhat similar to a Kasatha, but a lot bigger. And they both look rather hostile. Please roll initiatives. But I'm terrible at initiative. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, they're rolling balls. Well, at least our medic can go first. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right. With a screech, this creature climbs down from the dais. <laughs> I just tossed my icon on the that? screen. Oh, I didn't see them. And it comes crawling towards you. That is a double move for it right there. It seems that these things are not particularly fast. Kira. Okay. All right. Well, since it's right in front of me, <laughs> I try mm -hmm. and this creature with my um, my little um, now why can't I think of Spear? the word for it? Pokey stabby. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was thinking staff, but I was like, no, it has a pointy end. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm gonna try and jam it. All right. You, a your volume's gone again. Thirteen does not break through. So this big old guy comes around the corner and he's going to open up with a machine gun Ooh. at Angus. What? I look so... A 15 misses as he just opens up doo -doo 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 and just hits the ground near you. Oof. Absco. Absco's going to spend the round standing still. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and... Um... While he's remaining in place, or uh, while they're remaining in place, sorry. Okay, um, they're going to target um, Shobad. Yeah, that's within range uh, with a trick attack. So I'll roll my stealth for that. Okay. Uh, so it's a 22. Uh, so the DC is 20 plus their um, uh, CR. Uh, no. Didn't make it. Okay. You're unable to trick attack him. That is fine. I will just shoot him where I stand. Um, so Absco whoops out his gun. I do. I whip out my gun. And fires a shot. Yes. Oof. That's a 12 Ooh. and a miss. <laughs> but your holy arc pistol does not hit him. Sitsa. Um, Sitsa's going to uh, first attune herself. Uh, for a photon. Okay. And then she will grab her sickle out of her moat and she's going to slash at the rug in front of her. All right. It uh, lashes out at the kind of bug looking electric thing that is rather large. But again, uh, it seems you don't want to get too close to it with that electrical field. Angus. All right. I will photon a tune. And is it possible? go up to, is it Urog? What is this? Mm -hmm. Who's far away? The one who shot at me. Is it possible to uh, stellar rush him? Because the end You have a straight line to him, so yes. So that's what I'm... I, I rule that you have a straight line, even though, like, per boxes you don't. But yeah, you, you've got an unimpeded line to him. Okay, so I will do that. Okay. And I will roll a 20 versus KAC. That hits. Excellent. As you stellar rush him, uh, let me see if you hit him for the knockback. All right. Well, you strike him. You can't knock him back because he's much bigger than you. Okay. But you do manage to smack him with your stellar fire. Okay. As it just burns and he roars in anger and pain. Phaedra's not here. Be Urag here. <laughs> I want to get on my comms and... Mm -hmm. As I'm I'm rushing, I'm like, Phaedra, if you can get over here quick, we could really use the help. <laughs> um, that then do this. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Urag is going to try to slam. Eeny meeny miny mo. Uh, I think it wants to hit Sitsa, which it does. Ooh, Ooh. Rude. <laughs> and it does six 
bludgeoning, which is absorbed by your stamina, but you get smacked by this thing hard. Dara. Okay. Um, well, I should think that I'd be best to just keep on trying to hit this little creature. Or so, um, I just try and stab at him again with my spear. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Oh. Ooh. You swing out with your spear, but a zap from this thing seems to discharge into your hands, causing you to jerk back. Uh, let's see. This guy back here, he's going to actually drop his machine gun. And taking a step back, he pulls out a nasty carbon steel curve blade. Okay. And takes a swing at you, Angus. I'm still in range? Wow. Okay. Yes. Ouch. It hits you Indeed. with an 18 doing... Oh, 13. He hits you hard. He did. <laughs> All right. So Absco is going to try to stealth again, but this time with his special ability. Um, so uh, does 29 work for um, uh, the trick attack? 29 will do it. Sweet. All right. And then uh, they are going to aim and fire at Shabbat again. Uh, does a 24 hit? Oh, yes, it does. Yes. Cool. Then they get my regular damage, which is 1d6. There, there we go. And then okay. it also gets an extra d8 for the trick attack. Nice. All right, so it takes a total of 7 damage. And he's considered flat-footed. Nice. Very nice. Okay, you've you've hit him a couple of times. Uh, he's looking a little upset and stunned by the Sitsa. Um, she's, this is going to go up to level two attunement and she's going to slash with her sickle again. Okay. 14 is going to miss. Dang. Yeah, this thing is, it's hard to break through. It seems to have some sort of like natural armor, like that electric field around it is just protecting it. Uh, Angus. All right. Um, so he dropped the gun or he just like lowered it? He dropped it. Is it something I can pick up? <laughs> Give me a strength check. Looking at it, does it look like something I can pick up? <laughs> it looks like it is potentially something you could pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to trust my moat axe more. And I'm going to okay in, going to okay. in level photon attunement. And, I and he is flat-footed. Uh, 20 oh, yes, that will definitely hit him as you step up with your axe, just pushing him back. All right. Putting yourself between him and the gun. Oh. Ooh, and you land a solid blow on him with nice. 12 damage. You sink your axe into him and rip it back out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was rolling again to attack. It's my bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Phaedra, which one were you wanting to go for? Um, with your entrance here. Blue one? Phaedra, seeming this, to this have disobeyed. <laughs> seeming to have disobeyed orders. Suddenly, you guys just hear, like, what What do they hear? What's your... <laughs> Are you, you going to use your door ability? You just hear a war cry. You just hear a war cry oh, as yeah, Phaedra I'm comes running up. In nice. Using gore. Kill it, kill it, kill it. And so that's just like a regular attack, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Melee, yes. Nice. Oh, nice. yeah, you <laughs> smash into this thing. You head down, horns out, you are done. Nice. 26, Jesus. Yeah. Yep, if you're doing unarmed, yeah. The, my unarmed strike. Cool. Yep. Why aren't you using your weapon? Because she charged in, horns lowered. Get with the program. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she came in to tackle the damn thing. Nice. Go. Six. Nice. Full damage. You yes. come charging in and just like horns lowered, you headbutt this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks stunned. Like, what the hell just happened? In fact, it's so stunned, it's going to take a step back and it's going to try to shoot you with a bolt of electricity, which it Ooh. does. Ow. You get zap. You get a zap, <laughs> just a little jolt for four damage, just a little. Pssst. But it seems you have indeed surprised it, Kira. Uh, I laughed at it. <laughs> Phaedra has 
has ignored your orders and has come charging into battle to save the day. Uh, <laughs> I roll my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to take a step forward and still try to jab at this thing because I just... Did you get no back, abilities at back, third? Did it help you do something? <laughs> she, got second level, she got second level spells. That but as a healer. Up. Nice. A 19 does hit. Thank you. So my spear, 26 plus one. This is four, so it makes it five. Nice. Nickel and dime it. Let's nickel and dime them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, five damage done to it as you just pierce up through it. All right. Well, uh -oh. I think this uh, four-armed giant here is going to fight back. He really and take a swing at you. <laughs> I don't think he wants to. And he's going to hit you with that 21. Doesn't As his sword crashes down on you, you take four, you take actual damage. Four actual damage is broken through your stamina. Like you take a good cut as he just kind of maneuvers around. I'm guessing Absco. it doesn't do anything. Not for his attack. And uh, he's no longer flat-footed here. Sad. Okay, so no, flat-footed flat -footed makes uh, denies him his dex bonus to AC. Yeah. So um, Absco uh, sees that um, Angus is kind of in between him and um, mm -hmm. the other guy. So he's yes. still going to do a trick attack um, with, um, his, uh, with his ability. And then he's going to move to, to shoot. Okay. So uh, 36. Wow. Yes. With a trick attack, and he's going to move, or they're going to move right there. Just, just a final six. All right. <laughs> just a third. Absco Five. seems to have disappeared, blending in very well with the scenery behind him, and all of a sudden there is a blur of movement and a shot. And that shot does... Oh! <laughs> that was a one. <laughs> the shot flies wild. Absco was so concentrated on being cinematic. <laughs> was. Sits up. Uh, this Absco guy seems to have like disappeared, blending in with the scenery around him, and then all of a sudden there's a blur and a shot that just goes flying wild. Uh, Sitsa feels like that's probably about par for the course from what she's seen so far, and is just going to pretend that didn't happen. Um, she's now at level three attunement, which I think is what I need, right? Oh, yes, yes you are fully attuned. So Friend, please don't got fire at us. 30 feet, so <laughs> every other one counts as 10 feet on diagonals. For your move. Okay. So, yep, that would be plenty. So you circle around this thing, just glowing this deep burgundy purple glow. And then what does it look like when you set off your uh, your explosion here? Um, so when I set off my explosion, it's not nearly as exciting as the bomb, which I'm so <laughs> disappointed in myself about. <laughs> um, it almost looks like a like a smoke bomb has gone off, um, but instead of like smoke, it's like tendrils of light just explode nice. into this thing's face and it's all burgundy just a really beautiful shade of burgundy you're all very <laughs> impressed by the color <laughs> all right <laughs> so he's going to need to make a, a reflex save 14 eh, that might do it i gotta look at your yeah dc 11 DC here. okay so he's going to take half so okay. go ahead and roll your damage still takes eight all right yeah he still takes eight as you see him like duck as this smoke bomb goes off and just woof through the air. Uh, but he still gets singed. Angus. I would like to use this roll I made accidentally earlier. That was a <laughs> okay. <of these>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you'd like to use the one that was made how much earlier? Way uh, up here? Just at the end of my last turn when I thought I was getting a... <laughs> That's all. Yes, just like you're fine. That. You're fine. Yep. <laughs> you know what? That 27 is fine for an attack. You are the nice. It's on the it's on the GM table. <laughs> so, it's on the table. It's a legit roll. It just got rolled early. Okay, so that'll. That be... means if you roll badly, I can go back up and go. No, there's a one on the table. <laughs> this is true, but I'll take it. In That's this a instance, dangerous precedent. This guy has beat me down. So mm -hmm. my supernova is just been charging and charging and charging, and glitter is just sparking all around me, and it's just all looks like someone has poured pink glitter over my armor suit and then suddenly this guy 
just hits me that last time and actually gets into me and hurts me. I just explode out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I do 15 points of damage, and he gets to roll for it. I keep double clicking. Yep, there's the, his reflex save is 18. Therefore, oh. he will take half. Or seven. Uh, seven. 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 Always rounded down. Okay. But he's looking pretty hurt, though, uh, as Good. he manages to kind of just jump back from this. Uh, he still looks like he is really hurt. Phaedra. All right, yeah, I'm going to step up to bat. Phaedra steps back toward the Urog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to just wail it with my long sword. Phaedra steps up, drawing her long sword, preparing to do battle Ooh, with, with a natural the natural twenty. Nice. <laughs> Please roll attack again. Confirm a critical hit. That is a confirmed critical. Sweet. 13 damage to the Urog. You rear back and, I mean, Phaedra's on fire. I don't know what got under her skin, but she <laughs> is ready to destroy something. And she just, this is battle. Like, you see this battle rage over her. She is honed and focused and ready to go, and she just lays into this thing. With that, this Urag is going to try to get out of there. So it's going to withdraw and just is trying to get out. It it doesn't want to play with you anymore, Kira. That doesn't provoke any attacks of opportunity, or is it like a skill it has? No, it took a it took a withdraw action, meaning that okay. it uh, used a full round action, so that the first square it moved out of did not provoke. It's totally so it's within charge. First square range. of it's. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> It is okay. well within charge range. Uh, like I said, these things are not very fast when they're unfolded like this. Yeah, let me throw them. Don't you have a pistol? Yeah, you do. I never use it, so let me... <laughs> What's the range? <laughs> Probably plenty. It is only 35 feet away. Range is 80 feet. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that's 80 feet me... before you start taking penalties. Yeah, so I'm going to move over and shoot at it with the pistol. All right, Kira moves to get a clearer line of sight, takes a shot, but just mm. barely misses it. Just barely. Not bad. No. The four-armed giant roars with uh, anger and defiance as he swings his sword at you again. Oh, yes. <laughs> but he rolls a natural one and stumbles, getting his sword wedged in the ground. Right. Absco. Absco is... Uh, just going to do the trusty trick attack again, but without his extra bonus. So, okay. with their extra bonus. So, 24, does that make for a trick attack? 24 meets. So, yes. Yes. Okay. So, then they are going to try to attack again or shoot again. <sighs> that was a 10. <laughs> 10, so that however, miss. will miss. Uh, you're so focused on being stealthy and pulling these trick shots. Like, I picture you're sitting there with your pistol and like spinning it, and, like shooting under your arm, and then spin it and shoot it between your legs, and every it, shot is just missing. It, it's even more sad than that. He's like, they're they're like talking to themselves. You can do this. You do, you got this. You got this. You can do this. <laughs> Sitsa. Um, Sitsa's going to uh, first start reattuning her photon again. Okay. And she doesn't really have any ranged thing that she can do. But she can run up to that thing, I guess. You can actually charge it, should you care to. Um, sure, I will charge it. All right, that is a plus two to attack and a minus two to AC if you wish to charge. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Woo! Sitsa charges forward at this forearm giant, like, hey, I'm the forearmed one here. <laughs> I, I think it seems like Sitsa is taking this personally, that there is someone else with four arms <laughs> and bigger than her trying to beat people up. Yeah, she's not a fan. No. So go ahead and roll that damage. Whoa. That was uh, that was an attack. Okay. I was like, what? Oh, my God. The, the no, damage is to the right. Sorry, this one. Yep. Yep. And with seven damage, you... The Shobad takes seven damage with his sword stuck in the ground as he's trying to pull on it as you come running up and just bring your uh, sickle across him in a mighty slash, cutting him wide open. Angus. I will reattune to Photon, and okay. I will attempt to hit this person. Woo! 27 indeed. His sword stuck in the ground as he yanks on it. You just rear back and smash into him. 13 damage drops him. Nice. Nice. 
Nice. Dead to the ground. Phaedra. Come on, just do seven points of damage. <laughs> we can't hear you if you're talking. No. So I'm going to charge with my long sword. Phaedra is ready. She puts <laughs> her head down. She has her sword out and she is just running, giving her war cry. Nice. Nice. 20. Yes, you do run up to it, hitting it. Eight points of nice. damage. Yes. Eight <laughs> points of damage. Phaedra is not letting this get away as she charges forward and springs her long sword, smashing down on it as it gives a high pitched shriek and falls to the ground. The electric field around it just dissipating into the atmosphere. Awesome. With a battle roar. <laughs> yes. Shaking her longsword, giving her mighty battle roar. Roar! <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the bodies 20. don't really have anything of use. Okay. Can I pick up the gun? <laughs> Give me a strength check. Eleven, it is difficult for you to pick it up. You're pulling it. You can you can get it. It's going to be difficult to carry back to the ship. Were you to wield this in combat, you could do so, but you would take a minus two to all of your attack rolls Whew. if um, you don't make a strength check. I look well, at it. Depending on how bad you beat the strength check. Is this something that we can put on our ship as a defense? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. I was like, can we mount this to the door? <laughs> <laughs> it could be mounted as something it wouldn't be any use in like ship to ship combat but to repel borders or things yes yeah. you could absolutely mount it as a gatling gun kind of thing sweet nice. and is his sword any good uh the sword is too large for you to realistically okay. carry it but it would make an right. excellent it would make an excellent trophy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i see nothing wrong with keeping all of this stuff we could put it on the front of our ship, right? <laughs> <laughs> As, like, a spear. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. For uh, us saying that we're not pirates, we sure act like pirates. We're like, yeah, yes. let's mount this to the front of our ship. <laughs> like, we're not doing it. There's your raiders. Yeah. You're, you're not pirates, you're raiders. There's a difference. <laughs> um, yes, the drift beacon. We'll, we'll cut through this. The drift beacon really just needs the on switch flipped. Oh, is it something Fantastic. you're able? Go. Yeah, it's something you can just go up there and flip the switch and the drift beacon is working. Well, I was okay, wondering, so is there a way for us to take it out into space and turn it on? Or does it have to stay mounted to this pyramid? Because otherwise- Give me an, engin give me an engineering check on that. Phaedra, can you help with this? Absolutely. So you have the better roll, so I'll help you. So my roll's a 22. And... And Angus rolled in the, or no, that's a strength check to lift the thing. Rolled a 20. And 21, yes. So 24 total. So you have two options. You can spend the time just, you know, disassembling this thing and pulling, uh, you know, taking it off the pyramid and tugging it up into space with you. Mm -hmm. Or you can set up a message letting people know that it's not safe to jump to this one, which will be a lot shorter. I'm willing to take anyone else's ad ad advice on this, but personally, I think that if we had locked onto this and come in, we would be dead. And it's just better to get it up into space. And we can- I, I agree with you. I don't think we should leave this out here for someone else to potentially hurt themselves. I agree. Okay. I also agree. So we'll yep. take the time. How's that for- All right. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> you take the time to disassemble it and drag it up with you into space. You manage to input your coordinates to EOX. Sweet. And arrive. Just fine. Woo! There Hurrah. sits the planet where you are headed. You are sent over to Pact Port, where all of the Pact World ships are. Land, as everyone is doing their work, preparing to disembark, everyone looks around and realizes Sitsa is gone. And the smuggler door is slightly ajar. And that is going to have to be the end of our episode what? for today. What? <laughs> Amazing. So well for experience points, I'm Miu. Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Miu Plays Games. I'm Kelric. You can find me at EQ Points and at Cormalon, C-O-R-M-A-L-L-O-N. And as Angus, I'm very sad that she didn't even say goodbye. We had some friends <laughs> <moments> together. <laughs> I'm Taylor. You can 
find me on Twitter at Milky Games. That's G A Y M E S. I'm Megan, and you can find me on Twitter at Dungeons and Meg. I'm Punder. You can find me on Twitter at Punder Drone, D R O N E. And we were very happy to have our very special guest, uh, Jess, uh, again, the GM of Bitches and Liches. You should go check that out. Thank you. And really quickly, Esitra, later or later, you'll find a uh, note from Esa that says, Angus, it was great sparring with you. I hope you do it again sometime. <laughs> Everyone else, fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one who wasn't yeah. a dick. <laughs> <For a change. laughs> there, maybe there's also a picture of her just doing this movement again. <laughs> yeah, just throwing her arms up in the air. At Phaedra, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.